Welcome back to the Skylanders Ultimate Nightmare series, where I will be playing a solo run with every Skylander on Nightmare Mode to see which Skylanders and which of their upgrade paths are better. To start off with, we're looking at Prism Break on the Prismancer upgrade path, which boosts the power of his beams. Specifically, he gets the upgrades which say, Energy Beam Attack does more damage, Energy Beam splits into three when refracting through a Crystal Gem, and the Energy Beam has increased attack range. One other important thing to note is that I'm using the Series 2 Prism Break, which means I get the Wow Pal. That allows you to hold down the beam attack and press secondary attack button to send a shockwave down the beam, dealing massive damage to all the enemies nearby. And I mean massive. This pulse attack is pretty much instantaneous to fire off, and every crystal that it refracts through increases the damage by a lot. You can see how quickly I'm able to take out many of the hordes of enemies by just using this one attack alone through a couple of crystals. The regular beam deals are just above 20 damage, but the pulse does just above 80. So you can imagine I'll be using that move a lot throughout this run. I'm even able to defeat Brock without even taking out the life spell punks. Look at how quickly the Executioner dies to just that one move. It's kind of insane actually how powerful it is. Now Prison Break is my favorite character from Spyro's Adventure overall, but even I have to admit he has some weaknesses. Most notably, Prison Break is slow. That means it's going to be harder to dodge enemy attacks, and when you do have to dodge them, you won't have as much time to use your own attacks, because you'll have wasted most of it running away. He's also got a bit of a blind spot. If enemies are too close to him, you can't really drop crystals on their head, because the crystals only come out at a distance. You can still use the primary attack at this range, but even if you use the Wow Pow option to send the pulse, it's not going to deal nearly as much damage as if it were refracting through some crystals. You can also try using the tertiary attack in these scenarios, but that move is actually really slow and doesn't push enemies back nearly far enough to be useful. Not to mention, when there's an enemy on top of you, it's probably not a great idea to use an attack that'll force you to stand still, it's probably better to start running. It's also worth noting that the crystals count as distractions, meaning enemies will go target them and you can do things like this. They also can be deployed up on top of edges and past walls, which makes sniping some enemies pretty easy. And lastly, if a bomber throws their bomb onto a crystal, its explosion will actually hit the enemies as well. Normally if those guys miss, it doesn't hit the enemies, it only hits you. But it doesn't make up for this, I should not have gotten hit twice here. And the Maze Majors come out to try and exploit my weakness of not being able to hit very well right in front of me. And they do a pretty good job at that. It's looking extremely dire here, but I was able to just barely squeeze out a win. And now, we wait. Alright, we had a really close to death scenario there, so surely I'm going to be much more careful of the double grenade general bombs. That was the first really big scare of the entire run. Normally I'm able to set up crystals before picking a fight. The Chompy Mage boss fight is pretty much free as long as you know how to dodge. On the Troll Home Security Castle, Chompy Bot is not a problem. It may have a lot of health, but it doesn't move, and that's what I like as this character. Lucky for me, all the grenades are rolling downhill at this section. This troll gets absolutely wrecked. Nearing the end of the level, we face off against some inhuman shields, which do end up being a little bit of a problem because I can't really get behind them super easily. My strategy is to drop a crystal into the ground and hope they target that instead. This troll stomper is no problem at all, the only real threats are the grenade generals of course, so I go to take them out first. Onto the castle interior. There's tons of close range enemies like mohawk cyclopses and mace majors, there's also grenade generals throwing grenades at you all the time, and there's not a lot of room to run, so we take a death here. Onto the Crystalier upgrade path. Here, a crystal eruption attack is going to get increased range and damage, the crystal summon is going to drop three crystals at once, and we're going to get extra armor. Even without the beam upgrades, the Wow Pow is still going to be immensely powerful, because it does more damage the more crystals it refracts through. One thing to note about this upgrade path is that Prison Break never turns yellow, so he stays green. This is very important. Although the beam only refracts into two different beams instead of three, it still provides a lot of the same area coverage because there's now more crystals for it to refract through. There is a secret upgrade that the game does not tell you about. 
If you're on Prismancer Upgrade Path, you can have at most four crystals in the ground, but if you're on Crystal Ear, you can have up to six. And having six crystals at once is quite the significant upgrade. Here I made the mistake of trying to use my tertiary attack. You should probably just ignore that one when you're playing Prism Break. This has got to be one of the fastest execution or killing characters in the game, right? There's normally quite a few enemies at the ending of this level, but because I can just set up crystals ahead of time, I can kill all of them almost instantaneously. And that applies to the right side as well, except for the Goliath throws at the end. They do take a little bit of actual work. I figured Prison Break might struggle a bit with the ice floor section, but he killed every enemy so quickly it didn't even matter that he had no mobility. And the double executioner double bag of boom section was quite a bit easier considering that the bombs never got thrown at me, they were typically targeted at my crystals. Enemy onslaughts tend to not actually be super difficult as long as you can put crystals down beforehand. Even up here in the secret vault of secrets where many characters struggle, I just have to have crystals up and it ends up being pretty easy. The only difficulty that comes is from when they despawn for having been out too long. Or, I suppose, if you think they're gonna block an attack, but depth perception fails you? That one might just be a me thing. Once again, we get to look at one of Prison Break's biggest weaknesses. Enemies that run up close, have shields, and don't let you run away because the arena is really narrow. These guys were extremely hard to take out, and I even got a shield proc here, so thank you to that upgrade. But I was able to live with just enough health to take them all out. And the rest of the level is basically no problem, because I can drop crystals on them like this. I was able to spawn in a bunch of crystals before the Mace Majors came down, which helped out a ton because those guys would then target the crystals instead of chasing down me. Overall, I think the sheer power that Prison Break's Wow Pow has should have meant that I could get much farther into the game, but apparently the speed, or the lack thereof, is really a big problem that I didn't anticipate. Keeping in mind that I do zero heroic challenges for all these runs, so the speed is lower than you might see on some other players' runs. Obviously not having any mobility is pretty bad, but really I thought that having the sheer damage output Prison Break does would be able to carry him much farther than he got. And while a tertiary attack is pretty useless, I do think I like the Crystalier upgrade path just a bit better now, mostly because you get six crystals.